Hey everyone, today I'm going to be explaining the Carter Drift Scale and my goal for humanity's future. If you have any questions, please ask them after the video. Let's start off by asking ourselves, what is the Carter Drift Scale? The scale originates from the Soviet and Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, not Kardashian. Nikolai believed that there were alien species out there on yonder planet waiting to be discovered, but didn't know how to classify their intelligence. So he thought that the more energy a society could produce, the more technologically advanced the life form is, eventually creating the Carter Drift Scale. For example, humans back then harnessed energy by producing fire by rubbing two sticks. Nowadays, humans just taught machines how to do it and made more fire. Which is kind of sad, but at least we got these things. The scale made in 1964 was split into three groups. A type 1 civilization, which has planetary power. A type 2 civilization, which has stellar power. And a type 3 civilization, which has galactic power. Let me explain what each civilization can do. A type 1 civilization has the ability to harness the energy of the entire home planet to around 10 to the 16th power watts, which is 1 followed by 16 zeros. That doesn't mean digging for oil or using fossil fuels, it also means taking in the energy of every wave the sea makes, every photon the sun shines on earth, converting every gust of winds, and plenty more. But building so much to do this might destroy our planet, filling every gap with nature with machines. So how can we fix this? Iter nuclear fusion. Fusion power focuses to create an unbelievable amount of energy in a safe, economical, and self-sustaining way. They do this by fusing atoms together to reach a temperature 10 times hotter than the center of the sun. A Type 1 civilization would also be able to play with the weather, control volcanoes and earthquakes, live in oceans, anything planetary. A Type 2 civilization has the ability to harness the energy of their own home star to around 10 to the 26th power watts. A great example of this would be Star Trek. A Type 2 civilization has the ability to travel to other planets of our solar system and can create a structure called a Dyson Sphere. A Dyson Sphere, theorized by Freeman Dyson, is basically a hollow sphere of mirrors surrounding the sun to harness all or most of its energy. Another theory to harness the star's energy is called the Penrose Process, in which you throw two pieces of matter into a black hole, while one piece falls into the black hole and the second escapes it using the black hole's momentum. As the escaping piece escapes, it gathers and harnesses energy from the black hole, to the point where the black hole slows down in rotation where the escaping matter escapes. I have no idea what I just said. At this point, these civilizations are immortal. A Type 3 civilization has the ability to harness the energy of its entire galaxy to around 10 to the 36 power watts. Right now, use your imagination and whatever you think of, it might be possible with these civilizations. These life forms are able to control every or most planets, stars, and black holes in this galaxy, possibly creating a Dyson Sphere to every star, creating a black hole or antimatter bombs, driving the solar system with warp drive, it's pretty crazy. An example of a Type 3 civilization would be Star Wars. Other type civilizations were made later, such as a Type 0 which can only harness energy from raw materials, a Type 4 which controls the entire universe, or a Type 5 which can control and manipulate other universes. Carl Sagan created a formula which determines the type civilization a species is by inputting their energy use. Currently we are a Type 0 civilization, off of the scale. More specifically, humans are a Type 0.7 civilization, and physicist Michio Kaku claims that our generation is the current transition from a Type 0 to a Type 1 civilization, and will become one in about 100 to 200 years. Now, here comes my goal for humanity, to become a Type 1 civilization. Well, Michio did say that we already might become one pretty soon, but he also said it was pretty dangerous. While we have the potential, there are plenty of obstacles that block our path into evolving as humans and as a civilization. These obstacles include wars, the use of nuclear weapons, terrorism, nuclear and germ warfare, global warming, disease, floods, poverty, environmental destruction, the list goes on. If these obstacles continue to block our path, humanity will either halt in technological advancement, or if disaster strikes, humans may be rubbing sticks to start a fire again. Why is this important? Well, improving our civilization instead of keeping it unchanged will help humanity survive for millennials to come. Becoming a Type 1 civilization will be the first step into becoming an invincible civilization, which again might be possible by becoming a Type 2 or 3 civilization. Can we achieve it? If you destroy yourselves with the weapons and global warming? No. But plenty of evidence is already existence that we are becoming a Type 1 civilization right now. According to Michio Kaku, we are already forming a Type 1 economy. With the European Union competing with NAFTA, we may eventually have a national economy. The internet also can be considered a Type 1 telephone system, since it runs nationally across the globe. A Type 1 language may eventually exist, in which it most likely would be English since many people nationally use it primary or secondarily. 
Our planet is starting to join people of all nations together, especially with the Olympics and other national events. Because of this evidence, we do have some signs that show that we are currently evolving into a type 1 civilization. So, here's what we've got so far. The Kardashev scale describes how technologically advanced a civilization is, and we are currently at type 0.7. My goal is to become a type 1 civilization since we are already transitioning into one, but we must face the obstacles that block our path. Becoming a type 1 civilization is crucial for the longevity of the existence of humans. As said from Michio Kaku, we are the generation that will determine the transition from type 0 to type 1, or we destroy ourselves because of our arrogance and our weapons. Our species will have to work towards progression rather than entertainment among modern technology. The problems we'll have to fix include global warming, natural conflict, and politics. The things we'll innovate include space exploration, world peace, technology, sustainability, research, and discovery. Doing so would fasten the process, as the world would be more open to the goal and less occupied by problems or entertainment. Also with these improvements, the world would be less likely to come into conflict. To help reverse global warming, we need to become more sustainable, especially with energy consumption and harnessing, peace for the environment, and the safety among animals. We must reduce our carbon footprint, which consists most of carbon emissions from fossil fuels. We must find better ways for transport, energy use, and production to become more sustainable. Deforestation, illegal hunting, and wildfires and bushfires must be stopped or slowed. We only have about 10 years before the effects of global warming will be irreversible. To prevent wars, equality among all people, including gender and races, must be made. Wool should be shared among everyone, so not people are either too rich or too poor. Along with that, countries must control the use and possession of weapons. Too many people with weapons will result in recklessness, conflict, and chaos. Also, people, especially significant leaders, must understand that war is not the only way to create world peace. For example, a Roman saying was said, Sibi bacum barabulum, meaning peace through strength. In other words, war is needed to create peace. This adage is still used today and is not a very good way to create global peace. We also need to recreate and re-engineer our global political system into a more democratic way because the last thing we would want is a global autocracy, which means one person in power above all in the planet. The phrase for this is called world dictatorship, which is bad. If we recreate a national political system, humanity will become more connected to the point where different countries or a set of people don't call themselves a different part of humans or a tribe of a nation to the point where we all know that we're all humans. If we end successful with reversing global warming, preventing a nuclear war, achieving world peace, improving the national political system, and innovating with space exploration, technology, and knowledge, we will be able to achieve the status of a type 1 civilization. Like what I said before, this will be the first step into becoming an invincible civilization. By this time, we'll be able to colonize other planets such as Mars to spread humanity planetarily. We'll be able to control the weather, which is a lot more significant than you think. Controlling the weather will allow us to stop global warming, as will direct coldness to melting areas, rain to droughts, or decrease global temperatures to ensure that Earth sustains a healthy and livable climate. We will also be able to harness energy more efficiently and sustainably, as we will be able to harness every photon of light the sun gives us, every gust of wind, and every wave the ocean makes. Add to that, we might even be able to perform fusion power successfully which will boost our sustainability and our energy production. However, if our world continues to suffer from global warming for worsens or a nuclear war takes place, creating hatred among all people, we will not have achieved the status of type 1 civilization, and we might even decrease our rank as a civilization. Humanity would have gone through something called the Great Filter, which is a theory made to explain the Fermi Paradox, which is a question asking where are all the aliens? Great filters are whatever prevents a life form from continuing, thus making the life form extinct. Brave filters include abrupt global destruction, climate change, nuclear war, running out of resources completely, or robots taking over humanity. Earth has only been through one possible great filter, which is the creation of the mitochondrion. When a primitive hunter cell swallowed another cell, instead of consuming it, the two cells work together to evolve into a more complex cell, which now consists of every animal in the world. If this primitive hunter cell devoured the other cell, life had not been evolved into who we are today. The good thing about becoming a type 1 civilization is that we as humans will have access to plenty more possibilities, ranging from space exploration to advanced technology. Our potential to expand our species outside our planet would be high, and our security of our own planet would be strong. The bad thing about becoming a type 1 civilization is that although we have numerous amount of possible innovations, we also have a new list of possible tragedies. These include artificial intelligence malfunctioning to take over humanity, a nuclear war if not worse, gene editing the perfect superbug, 
an experiment that ends up in global chaos or even something that comes unexpectedly. We must also use technology wisely and not against ourselves. After all this talking, my mouth is starting to dry, so I'll call this video an end. In conclusion, our planet is currently a type 0.7 civilization, and my goal for humanity is to raise it to a type 1 civilization, where we have complete control over our planet. If we do not destroy ourselves with global warming or our own weapons, and improve our sustainability, peace, and knowledge, we will succeed and achieve this goal. If not, humans will face plenty more boundaries, preventing the evolution for a better species for many years or centuries to come. And there you have it, the Carter Shift Scale and our march to become a Type 1 civilization. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, please leave a like. Anyways, goodbye.